Tonight, Cairo 7 investigates a plan that could dramatically increase the number of oil tankers coming through Washington state waters. More tankers raises the risk of oil spills that could reach Washington beaches. Cairo 7's Graham Johnson went to British Columbia to find out what's being done to prevent a spill or, worst case scenario, handle a cleanup of our shores. At the West Ridge Marine Terminal near Vancouver, ships load oil from the Trans Mountain Pipeline. The pipeline starts 715 miles inland across the Canadian Rockies in Edmonton, Alberta. Increasingly, it carries heavy tar sands crude. We're in the business of uh, the safe transportation of petroleum. Kinder Morgan wants to expand its pipeline and bring in more tankers. The monthly maximum of ships could rise from five to 34. I think uh, we've described a project that's in the public interest. That claim is in serious dispute. We don't want your dirty pipeline. The pipeline is fiercely opposed by First Nations and environmental groups worried about oil spills. They staged protests outside federal permit hearings. There is no planet B. In January, the British Columbia provincial government came out against expansion. As these protests pick up in Canada, there is also increasing alarm south of the border. Fred Fellerman is a consultant for Friends of the Earth. Last November, he was elected to the Port of Seattle Commission. This is the single biggest risk to our waterway that nobody knows about. Tankers leaving Port Metro Vancouver past the San Juan Islands and out the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Fellerman says the route includes prime feeding grounds for endangered killer whales. This is clearly a, a recipe for disaster. Kinder Morgan says it is ready for any oil spill. This is an air inflatable boom. We toured the warehouse for Western Canada Marine Response Corporation, which cleans up spills. This has to be uh, ready to go all the time. Kinder Morgan says if the pipeline expansion is approved, it will spend $100 million on more cleanup equipment, boats, and workers. There will be five new bases along the tanker route. The company says oil spill response times would dramatically improve. Six hours everywhere in this red zone. All of this might look impressive, but critics are not convinced. Are the Canadians sufficiently prepared to handle these oil spills? No. Senator Maria Cantwell says the problem is the type of oil coming from the tar sands, a heavy crude called diluted bitumen. This is not the Exxon Valdez. It's worse because the product will sink. In 2014, the U.S. Coast Guard's top commander told Cantwell there's good technology to remove oil from the surface, but... Once it settles on the, on the seafloor, um, our technology is lacking. With the Coast Guard saying they don't have a way to deal with it yet, it's, we shouldn't take the risk. Bitumen sank in a spill in Michigan's Kalamazoo River in 2010. Kinder Morgan says in its testing, bitumen floated 10 days, long enough for cleanup. The company has an agreement with the smaller of two U.S.-based spill responders in case a slick moves into Washington waters. It says spills are prevented with two local pilots on every ship and tethered escort tugs through critical areas. Kinder Morgan says if pipeline expansion is approved, tugs will start following every outbound ship all the way through the Strait of Juan de Fuca, matching the risk, the company says, of moving from about one tanker per week to one per day. Joe Raymond, the U.S. Coast Guard's Seattle-based captain of the port, says there's plenty of room for more oil tankers. Do you feel confident that if there is a spill in the Strait, there will be enough resources? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That confidence is something pipeline supporters and opponents both hope will never be tested. In Burnaby, B.C., Graham Johnson.